Justice Clarence Thomas and the numerous purported ethical violations reported by ProPublica is in the limelight again because a big step forward has been taken into the investigation of these actions. An official letter written by Senator Sheldon and Representative Hank Johnson has officially been sent to the Judicial Conference. This is the conference that oversees the justices in this country. And if the justices decide, they can request that the Attorney General of the United States open a criminal and civil investigation into Justice Clarence Thomas. The letter says specifically, we write to request that the Judicial Conference exercise its authority pursuant to 5 U United States Code Section 13106, Section B, to refer Associate Justice of the Supreme Court, Clarence Thomas, to the U.S. Attorney General. There is reasonable cause to believe that Justice Thomas willfully failed to file information required to be reported under the Ethics and Government Act of 1978. This letter is specifically referring to the failure of Justice Thomas, failure to disclose the sale of the interest in three of his properties in Georgia to the billionaire Harlan Crow in 2014. Now, Justice Cl Thomas did report his ownership of those interests over the years, but he failed to report the sale. They go on to say the requirements of 5 U.S.C. Section 1304, Section A-5 are plain and unambiguous. That provision states that a reporting official must provide a brief description, the date and category of value of any purchase, sale, or exchange during the preceding calendar year, which exceeds $1,000 in real property other than property used solely as a personal residence of the reporting individual or the individual spouse. The transaction value exceeded 1000 and the exception was clearly un inapplicable. So, I mean, from the reading of that code, it does seem that Justice Thomas has violated by not um, reporting on the sale I mean, never mind, um, the letter also talks about his receipt of the gifts and how that could also be an ethics violation. And specifically, it says, last week, ProPublica reported that Justice Thomas accepted luxury trips from Crow virtually every year for more than two decades, including private jet flights, international cruises on a super yacht, and regular stays at Crow's private resorts without disclosing almost any of them. I mean, the reason why this letter is so significant is because of how rarely um, justices are even ever investigated. And I, the, the, it's probably unlikely that this conference would actually request the attorney general to investigate because of its history of not being very good at investigating themselves. But this letter is now part of a pu the public document it lays out very clearly and put on notice the alleged ethical violations that he did do. And I think it's really important here because one, you know, if Justice Thomas is trying to say that he didn't uh, realize that not disclosing it was a violation, he is, you know, one of the nine justices are the ultimate deciders of the law. His job is literally to interpret the law. For him to say he could not interpret the law correctly is uh, really far-fetched and also kind of alarming that somebody that is sole job is interpret the law could not interpret something that is in such plain language a violation to not um, disclose that. So that in itself, being a Supreme Court justice, the problem here is that Chief Justice Roberts is in charge. He's the head of this conference. And we know that the Supreme Court has, is very bad at investigating themselves. You know, when the leak happened over the Dodd opinion, they brought in and did an investigation. And, you know, the employees and were asked to be given interviews under penalty of perjury. 
but not the nine justices. They were not required to talk to the investigators under penalty of perjury. I mean, talk about being above the law. Your employees are subject to penalty of perjury, but not the nine justices. And then surprise, surprise, they couldn't figure out what happened. So, you know, clearly they have, the Supreme Court has shown that they're not very good at regulating themselves. And so if this letter fails to do what it needs to do, what kind of options are there? The Senate Judiciary Committee could subpoena Clarence Justice Thomas to come and sit for an interview and give uh, more details, again, under perjury, penalty of perjury here to really talk about his failure to disclose items. The problem with this is that the vote requires a majority. And right now, because Senator Feinstein has been sick and is not able to vote on the Judiciary Committee, the Democrats do not have that majority. And this just is increasing the call for Senator Feinstein to resign because the Republicans are not willing to step in and put a temporary replacement on the committee. This is not only causing an issue with them not being able to subpoena Clarence Thomas, but it's also causing an issue in that they're not able to put forward um, Biden's nominees for the judici- the federal judiciary in general at all levels. And so this is going to become an increasing issue that, you know, and the reason why I think partly the governor is reluctant to nominate replacement is because there's quite a few candidates who are trying to, you know, replace her in an election. And if they nominate one of them, he's maybe putting his thumb on the scale. But at this point, you know, don't, let's not sit in the seat too long Let's not do something like Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who was amazing, but stayed in it too long. And so much of her work was undone because President Trump was able to nominate her replacement. Senator Feinstein, let's not do that again. Step aside so that there can be a replacement who could put forward the nominees, who can subpoena Clarence Thomas. We needed to get to the bottom of this. The Supreme Court justices cannot be above the law. They literally are the ones, the ultimate deciders of the law. They have to be able to follow ethical rules and cannot say, oh, we just didn't understand the law. Um, We need to hold them accountable. And but we can only do that with a majority of Democrats on the Judiciary Committee. Our blue wall stopped the red wave and election deniers got denied election. That's why we're celebrating with the new Democracy Prevails team. We've got lots of work to do, but we should all be proud that when democracy was tested, democracy prevailed. You've earned this. Don't wait. Get yours right now at store.midastouch.com. That's store.midastouch.com.